these honeybees are foraging on a cardoon. There are also many other pollinators on the flower. You can see some flies, you can see some tiny beetles, um, but you really can't see a whole lot more than the honeybees on the very top. These two honeybees are right next to a green sweat bee. The sweat bee is on your left coming out and he's kind of walking around there. He's trying to find another place that he can kind of dive into. You can see the differences between the sweat bee and the honeybees and how they forage. The honeybees are pretty much on the top of the flower and can't really dive really deep down in. Here's a honeybee showing how she uses her forelegs to pick up pollen off the flower and push it back onto her hind legs. She's got pretty hairy hind legs that kind of catch the pollen. This looks like a brand new bee, a young bee. She has lots of hair on her thorax. Here are two more bees, lots of pollen on their, on their backs, on their back legs. And there again is the sweat bee. They're meeting each other, being kind. There's the two bees meeting each other. And they're being, you know, they don't care. They're being nice to each other too. Everybody seems to be going about their business. Here they are again, kind of greeting each other, but then going back to foraging duties and getting that done, not really bothering each other. There seems to be a balance here. There seems to be enough resources for both honeybees and native pollinators. It also helps that the metallic bees are thinner and are able to deeply enter the flower to collect pollen while the honeybee is restricted by its size. I do think that there is room for both.